It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna talk about Uber. Now normally for Uber, I use them all the time. I use Uber to go to the supermarket, to my job, to some sort of place far out. And typically the prices for Uber are super cheap in comparison to like the taxi drivers. However, for this video, I am not talking about my own personal experiences when it comes down to Uber. However, I'm talking about the new anti-racist policies that Uber decided to adopt. Being an anti-racist company, with the resurgence of cases, it can feel that our collective attention has moved back to COVID-19 pandemic and away from the issue of race and inequality, even though those topics are linked. That's why I believe it's all the more important we do more now. While we don't see results immediately, we cannot let the issue of racism and systemic inequality fade from our minds or actions. This statement right here is just telling people that he's actually upset that people are focusing more on deaths than racism at the moment. Now, don't get me wrong, I do in fact believe that racism is bad. Of course, every single country has racism, and personally, I think that racism will never end because as long as humans have biases against other races, racism, no matter how much you try to, you know, demonize it, will never actually completely fade away from society. That being said, though, I think, of course, when it comes down to the issue of COVID-19, it seems as though that there are more deaths right now from COVID-19 in comparison to racism right now. I haven't seen any type of protests or whatever from white supremacists. And so I think when it comes down to this issue, there's more people supporting Black Lives Matter right now than people who are actually racist trying to protest against Black Lives Matter. Ridding our platform of racism, no commitment, no right. Our community guidelines explicitly prohibit racist behavior and we will continue to ensure that everybody using our platform understand what is expected when using our apps and commit to the rules. Okay, fair enough. Anti-racism education for riders and drivers, together with experts, we will develop new anti-racism and unconscious bias training for drivers and riders starting in the United States and Canada. Translation, they want to indoctrinate drivers with their social justice nonsense. Now, depending on the definition of anti-racist, now some people say that a part of anti-racism, of course, is to abolish capitalism. Another definition of anti-racist is a person, of course, who try to be as actively against racism as possible. However, they believe that minorities cannot be racist for some strange, odd reason. And so, it seems as though that the word anti-racist has been really, really misused because it seems as though that people are using that word to actually push racial agendas. And of course, and this whole entire thing that is done by Uber right now, they're doing the exact same freaking thing. Now, is the unconscious bias training only for white people? Is it for minorities? Is it for both people? Because I think that if you want to, you know, treat people as equals, do the training for everybody. Now, as far as this training is concerned for like riders, are you talking about passengers for your cars? Because passengers, I don't think I want to hear like your personal racist bias stuff in the car while I'm trying to go to Walmart or something. I'm sorry, I'm not interested in that. So sorry, I'm not interested in that kind of training myself. Specialized customer support. We will offer our customer support agents specialized training on bias and discrimination and commit to improving our apps to make it simpler and easier for anyone to support discrimination issues to us. By the way guys, it gets worse from here on out. It just gets worse from here on out. Fighting racism with technology. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but that phrase right there is kind of just funny to me. Inclusive product design. 
We will create a new dedicated inclusivity and accessibility product lead role to help design and build products that are inclusive and meet the standards of our customers, no matter your race, gender, age, or ability. Marketplace Fairness, we will formalize and expand our initial fairness working group of data scientists, product managers, and operations leaders to advise how to build products that take into account issues of fairness and equity. Diverse team for diverse customers. We will further expand the pipeline of black and other underrepresented technical workers by broadening our internship and fellowship programs and partnership with global NGOs. That last line right there was just completely racist right there. I'm saying it's racist because of two things, right? The first assumption of that paragraph assumes that customers, of course, need people that look like them to get help, and that is not true. That is not true in the slightest. I think the best kind of customer service is someone who actually is skilled, regardless of the skin color. And to me, at least, to say that people need someone that look like them because of reasons, that is like bigotry of low expectations. And also, it also want to have quotas for people just because they're a certain race. However, again, I think the most qualified person should get the job. Sustaining equity and belonging for all. I'm sorry, but the stuff that you guys are listening right now is not equity. Because equity and equality are two kind of separate concepts. Now, equity is basically the idea of hiring people or judging people based upon their skill level. And of course, for equality, there's two types of equality, right? The first type of equality is like equality of outcome and the equality for opportunity. And it seems as though that the policies that you guys have in for Uber right now is actually equality of outcome and not equality of opportunity. Pay equality full stop. Three years ago, we analyzed our salary data and made adjustments to achieve pay equality on the basis of race and gender. We will continue to focus on maintaining this important measure of equity going forth. This whole entire issue about pay equality is beating a dead horse at this point. Double black representation and leadership. We plan to double black representation and leadership by 2025 through pipeline development and hiring. We define leadership as those with director titles and above, representing the five most senior levels at Uber. Translation, more quotas. Transparency in our progress. We will continue to publish an annual diversity report and expand it to include data on intersectionality and self-identification. Oh no, not that word. Not that word, intersectionality. Driving equity in the community. $10 million to support black-owned businesses in addition to previously committing a million dollars to the Equal Justice Institute and Center for Police Equity, we will commit a $10 million investment over the next two years to advance the success of black-owned small businesses by driving demand via promotions and other merchant support. Look guys, I'm not against the idea of black people having their own businesses. I, of course, you know, want to have like a business in the future probably someday. However, I think people should invest money on a business based upon the quality of the product and not just because it's black. Because to me at least, if you support something just because it's black, I'm sorry, it's telling me at least that you support quality no matter where it comes from. And to me, you need to actually support a product that's actually good rather than someone's skin color. A zero dollar delivery fee for black owned restaurants. In addition to extending the zero dollar fee for black owned businesses for all of 2020, we are taking steps to officially identify and highlight the diversity of restaurants on our platform, including black owned businesses permanently. This is discrimination. This is literal discrimination. They're basically saying that because a business is black, they're exempt for delivery fees. However, for other businesses out there, they're not exempt for delivery fees. Now, I do believe that if there's like delivery fees for services, it should be applied for everybody. However, for Uber, 
They think that delivery fees for black people for black owned restaurants should be exempt based upon that skin color. That's actually racist. That is actually not solving any type of issue whatsoever. But anyway, that's the policy for Uber. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.